Hey, welcome back. So, if you've seen some of my other videos about the light beam product, I told you we were going to configure a point-to-point -point connection with that, just a, a transparent bridge. And so we're going to do that. So by default, these radios have an IP address of 192.168.1.20. So I've got one plugged in here, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to log in with UBNT and UBNT. And we're going to select the United States. That makes sure that we have the right set of channels and we're doing things legally. And then we're going to agree to the terms of use and we're going to log in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this on DHCP so that I can have both of my networks so we can configure, or both of the radios on so we can configure one side and then the other. So the first thing we're going to come in is we're going to come in here to network. And I'm going to turn it on DHCP, and I'm going to change that and apply it. And so now what's going to happen is this is going to pick up an IP address in the 192.168.2 network. So now I've got to hop back over uh, there real quick. We've got to find the IP address. We've got to plug the other uh, light beam in. We'll come back to this guy because I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we got that first radio turned over to DHCP. We got the other radio plugged in. So now both radios are are plugged in. And we'll pull up our DHCP server. And we'll view our leases. And you have to remember that this is in a lab environment. So uh, these things are not actually going to pass data. And um, I mean, I guess we actually could create a, a bridging loop here and cause cause some problems but we're just going to show how that connection is made and then we are going to dis, dis, disconnect it and um, then we'll do another video where I'm actually going to go to my neighbor's house a couple blocks away we're going to throw a, a G3 camera on the, the other side of one of these and we're going to do some remote video so that's going to be pretty cool but we can see that we've got one that's 2.38 and one that's 2.41. So 2.41, I'm not sure, actually, I'm not sure which one is which, but let's figure it out here. Wait a second. It's 2.38. And 2.41. So you can see we're using the default administrator password, so we're going to want to change that. Should get that warning here as well. And what's going to be the giveaway on these is I've already upgraded the firmware on one of these. So you can see this one's on 5.5.11. This one's on 5.6.7. So this is the one that we just plugged in because it has the older firmware. So before we can get started, what we've got to do is we have to get the new firmware. So we'll go over here to system and we'll uh, we'll check. Let's see. See, for some reason it says we have the latest firmware version available, but that is not true. So if you go out to the Ubiquiti site and you go to Air Max and you go to the M series and you go to Lightbeam M5, then you will see that 5.6.7 came out on July 5th. So I already have this guy downloaded. So first thing we're going to do to appease the system is we're going to change that password. And I'm, I'm just going to change it to 1234 temporarily. Do not use 1234 in production. It's, it's bad form, but this is a lab setting. So that's changed, so we'll change it over here as well. Yep, we know, we know, we know. And it's telling us that that's a weak password. Of course, 1234 is weak. We just want to get that little message to go away temporarily while we configure this. Uh, radio, it must, uh, must be rebooting or uh, saving those changes so it's unavailable. 
So this guy's back. So while the other radio decides to come back, what we're going to do is we're going to go to System. Here it is. And we'll upload this guy. And then we're going to click Update. And it's going to take a little while. So let's hop back over here and see. Okay, so this radio came back. So we're going to make this guy. Well, this guy's upgrading. Updating. We're going to make this guy the main radio. So we're going to come over here to wireless. And we're going to change the wireless mode to access point. And then we are going to enable WDS transparent bridge mode. And we're going to change the SSID to test lab. And I don't know about you, but I never hide the SSID. I don't think that SSID, there's kind of two schools of thought on it, but the way that I go is that SSIDs are not meant to be hidden. And um, if somebody has the right gear, they're going to be able to see it likely anyway. And then they're just going to get more curious. So I tend to not do that. We can stay at a default 40 megahertz channel width, so that's going to give you the most amount of throughput. And for this test, we'll leave the frequency uh, at auto. We will turn down the output power because these things are very close to each other, so we're going to turn these down to like 3. Security, we're, we'll turn on WPA2, we'll do pre-shared key. And we'll just say this is let me in one exclamation point. And now we are going to hit change and apply. And so the settings are going to take, take effect here. This guy looks like he's still updating. So we'll see if this guy is done saving his changes yet like I said so so you saw me check the box for WDS trans transparent bridge this is for a point-to-point -point. so you've got two buildings and you want them on the same network um, or you've got you know whether there's two office buildings or you've got an outbuilding a shed or whatever or um, you want to stick this guy up on a pole with a camera and get to the camera remotely, like up on a pole, you know, down the street or whatever. This is for a point-to-point -point connection. It's like stringing a long Ethernet cable through the air, which don't string long Ethernet cables through the air, but that, that's what this is like. So we're going to go over to wireless. Now this is going to be our remote radio. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it a station, and we'll enable transparent mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up, and it's going to scan. It's going to do a site survey. And you can see that our SSID is test lab. It's got the MAC address of the remote side. It tells us what our radio mode is, the encryption, all that good stuff. So we're going to select this and we're going to say lock to AP. And it knows the security. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to, now we're going to go ahead and change this and apply it. So it's going to save the changes. Also, I will tell you that I'm a huge fan of um, naming, you know, the the you know the devices something that means something to you. So this will just say this is uh, the main radio. I mean, this is you know this is in the lab. Uh, or let's do this lab main radio change that and apply it and then real quick we'll come over to this other guy he might still be applying his configuration I'm waiting here so you can see now here in the in the title this is lab main radio so we're going to come over here and we're going to say lab remote radio We will change that, and I am going to do some videos where we thoroughly explore AirOS 
and you know some of the options. So this guy is saving his changes. So we'll come back over here to main. And you can see we're not doesn't look like we're connected yet. We're gonna come over to wireless on this guy and we're gonna turn the uh, power down on this as well. Change this guy down to three. Just as, you know when there's five feet between the radios, we really don't want them screaming at each other. It can cause more problems than it's worth. Look like he's back up yet. Oh, look at this though. Oh, we had something, something happen here on the WLAN. Okay, boom, we're back up. Look at, this. look at this. It better be, it better be connected like that. And these things are just a few feet apart. So, um. This would be, you know, if this was real world, man, this, this connection would be pretty good. I wouldn't complain about it. So you can see we're connected. And we've got a transmit receive rate of 150 meg, 150 meg. And it's bouncing a little bit. These, uh, these radios aren't even facing each other. I just want you to know that they're actually facing away from each other. Um, and they're still they're still connected and, and there's a few feet between them, but that's it. You know, so if you had these guys mounted outside and, you know, you had some space in between them, your your point to point would be done. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment and share, and we will see you at the next video.